morning everyone my name is Steph from Green Grow Love and today I'm going to pot up two indoor plants that I bought yesterday in Williamstown so the first plant is a snake plant also known as a mother-in-law's tongue um, and the second plant is a spider plant which is a ribbon plant as well um, my nonna used to grow the spider plant quite a bit I remember it being inside and outside um, I don't remember many other indoor plants that she grew but I definitely remember the spider plant so the spider plant actually came with two seedlings in the one pot so I will separate those and put them into two pots and then the snake plant I will just um, make the pot a little bit bigger so that it has enough soil and nutrients to keep growing. I'm going to pot these outside in my little courtyard garden so it's just going to be on the floor, um, nothing too fancy and I'll explain everything as we go. So let's get into it. The snake plant is looking really healthy. It cost me $15 which I think is a great find in Melbourne. The spider plant, as you can see, has two seedlings, or two points it is shooting out of the soil. This one here only cost me $3, which considering I'm going to split it in half is an amazing deal. I have two plastic pot plants from a previous project and two ceramic pot plants that I'm going to bring the plants inside. I'm using a mixture of indoor plant potting mix and premium potting mix, both from Osmocote. And don't forget your coffee. My mug is made from eucalyptus ceramics and I'll link her below. Here I'm testing out which plastic pot plant will fit in the ceramic one to ensure I'm using the right size. This pot plant has a lip where you can see the plastic and I don't want that inside my house. I'm adding soil here after measuring the original pot plant. I'm going to add the soil around the plant so that when I remove the old pot, the soil and roots will fit perfectly in this new pot plant. I'm making a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. Unfortunately, a little bit of the root and soil got stuck in the old pot plant as the roots weren't fully established. This is okay as you don't want the roots to be root bound and in a tight circle. I am filling up more soil and tapping the plant into the new soil to make sure no air gets to the roots. Give the plant a good soaking of water. I'm also spraying the center as I got a little bit of soil in the leaves accidentally. And just like that, my snake plant is in a new pot and the roots have room to grow. I'm cleaning up the extra soil from before and putting that in my new pot plant, ready for the spider plant. Pushing the plastic a little bit helps to loosen the roots and the soil should fall out easily. As you can see, this plant is a little bit root bound where the roots are spiraling around the pot plant. This is a great indication that the plant needs a new pot. Gently tease the roots to allow them to grow in all directions and have a strong foundation to support plant growth. I'm gently teasing apart these two plants and as you can see it completely broke. I'll put it aside for later. I have added soil into a new pot and I'm going to use the old pot plant to create a hole for the spider plant roots and old soil to go in. Again, I am adding more soil and tamping it down to reduce air touching the roots. Tapping the sides also allows the soil to lay flat in the pot. Thank you. 
watering the roots and all the new soil. I have added a seedling and propagating mix to this small pot and going to add the spider plant that I broke off about one to two centimeters deep and pushing the soil really close to the plant to ensure it can soak up as much water and form roots. Once again, don't forget to add the water. I'm going to link the shop below where I bought these two plants. Okay, so I have potted those up. Obviously, as you could see, the spider plant, um, when I tried to tease it apart, just completely ripped off. Um, but I'm hoping that that will actually grow some roots on the bottom of that. Um, and then this is the other spider plant. So I was hoping to put the spider plant into this pot, um, but it won't fit. So I'll have to buy another indoor plant, I guess. Um, but I will find another pot plant for this big spider plant. And I'll just hope that this one survives. Um, and then lastly, my snake plant. So. The pot's sitting really good in this. Um, there's no drainage holes in the white pot. So yeah, it's looking really good, hopefully. There was a little bit of um, soil in between the leaves, but I'm hoping that that is okay. I've tried to get out as much as I could, and I think it's looking straight. Is it looking straight? Hopefully. Um, but that will probably be the front of where I put this snake plant, just because the back is obviously at the back and it's taller and it makes it look like a nice little arrangement. Thank you so much for stopping by today and watching me pot up my indoor plants. Uh, hopefully if you go to my Instagram you'll see them thriving in a few months and maybe even have a propagation of these ones here. So thank you again and have a lovely day. See you again in my next video. Bye! So here's the snake plant 26 days after I potted it up and it looks like we have one, two and maybe three new leaves. So it's looking amazing and it looks perfect on this shelf. I haven't put the spider plants anywhere yet. I just, oh no, it's broken. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I've just left them in here so that they can soak up a lot of water. But maybe I will open this to see if uh, there's any roots, just to show you what it looks like 26 days later. And I still need to find a pot for this and I probably need to water it as well. But that one's looking good um, apart from the broken stem. All right, let's, oh, there we go. As I suspected, this one that I cut, uh, that I broke, has three roots coming from it. So that's awesome to see and I can't wait to watch it grow.